let's begin the talk on basic ECGs. And I'm sure that a lot of you would have been clothed by ECGs or uh, intimidated by ECGs. And uh, today we'll try to solve some of those problems of ECGs that you might have been facing. And for this, we've got uh, three of us on the panel. Let me introduce you to Sonal. So Sonal Pruthi is a student uh, from UCMS. She was in the 2008 batch and has got a very strong uh, lineage and one of the best students that UCMS has produced. So Sonal, why don't you say hi to the friend, uh, to our friends here? Hi everyone. We also have uh, on the panel Prabhat, Dr. Prabhat Gautam Roy. You may not be able to see him on the uh, screen because you're having uh, technology challenges. However, Prabhat is there and uh, he's one of our residents at uh, UCMS in the Department of Education. Had we not been hit by uh, the pandemic, he would have definitely graduated by now and moved on to greener pastures. We are still lucky to have him around because of the COVID pandemic. And uh, I would ask Prabhat to say hi to you. Hi, everyone. Good evening. And yes, we look so... forward to with you. Yep, go ahead. No, sir, you can, you can carry on, sir. Sure. So let's uh, look at what we are going to cover in the webinar today. We are going to talk a little bit about the history of ECG, not more than two lines, don't worry. We will talk about the lead placement. We would talk a little bit about the ECG paper. We will talk about the normal ECG recording. And we will talk a lot about reading the ECG. In this, we are going to take you through the P wave up till the T wave. And we are going to talk about just a very few common pathologies. So this class is going to be extremely basic with just covering the concept and not going into the details of the depth of ECG. In case some of you feel that you know the concepts well and you really don't need to waste another hour on revising or looking at the same things that you know, this may be a good time to exit and you might look at the recording which I will share with all of you later. However, if you want uh, to cover these basics per se, we will uh, be happy that you keep uh, uh, along with us and stay with us. At any point of time, please feel free to raise your hands to ask questions or to click the question link. I will unmute you and ask you to speak yourself. We would like interaction, and if you want to only see, you could even read it from a book. There is no point in attending the class. That's what we feel. The more you ask, the more you interact, there are more chances that you will retain most of what we have to say. So Prabhat is going to take over the next few slides. Over to you, Prabhat. Yeah, so we start with the very basic, how was ECG, who discovered these who invented this ECG and uh, who started all of this so uh, as you know you must have studied in physiology that uh, the principle of electrocardiogram discovery was by uh, William Eindhoven uh, he was a, a physiologist uh, he was basically from the Netherlands he was a Dutch physician and uh, he discovered this uh, electrocardiogram in 1902. And then uh, you also know that there are two types of leads, uh, unipolar leads and augmented leads. So the unipolar leads, the concept for new unipolar leads was given by Frank Wilson. And uh, the concept for uh, augmented leads was given by Goldberger. And that is why the augmented leads are also called as Goldberger's leads, a Goldberger augmented leads. So we'll study more about it, that what are augmented leads and why do we call them augmented? So basics about the ECG paper. So uh, the ECG paper is basically there is a machine, an ECG machine, and uh, you can set different speeds on that machine. So uh, the ECG machine in its uh, 
classical conventional state runs at a speed of uh, 25 millimeters per second so that means that the ecg paper moves by a distance of 25 millimeter each second so if we try to uh, analyze it more that means that for every millimeter the ecg moves it takes 1 by 25 seconds to move that much so that is 0 0.04 second so that means that a small square on the ecg strip a small square which is 1 millimeter that is 0 0.04 second and the larger square which is uh, composed of five small squares is five times 0 0.04 that is 0 0.20 seconds so that is about the horizontal thing and uh, the vertical axis so the vertical axis is again representative of the voltage so that is also calibrated right before you start taking out dcgs so the conventional calibration is that uh, a 10 mm vertical axis corresponds to 1 millivolt voltage so that uh, translates to 0.1 millivolt per small square yeah so those are the basics for ecg paper and the paper that was earlier used was a thermophilic paper uh, it used to be a big machine and uh, with a pointer and uh, the printing would be dependent on heat it was a thermophilic paper but now the modern machines that we use we have a printer attached to them so, sure. uh, so let me interrupt a little bit here these these speeds are important for you you need to know exactly what is the one small square indicative of and what are the five large squares small uh, five large squares five large squares is 0.2 seconds and one millimeter square is 0 0.04 seconds you will not be able to identify the abnormalities in the ec if you do not uh, remember these uh, beats so uh, this is again what we just talked about so you can see there are small squares and a big square which is composed of five small squares so uh, each small square in the horizontal dimension translates to 0 0.04 second and in the vertical dimension each small square translates to 0 0.1 millivolt right so that is what we just studied and uh, we will also have a look at a basic uh, electrocardiogram tracing and what are the different waves that are available that are seen so we have a p wave we have a p wave in the beginning which signifies atrial uh, depolarization then we have a pr segment a segment pr segment which is from the end of p wave till the beginning of q wave the first negative deflection on ecg that is the q wave then we have r wave qrs complex this signifies ventricular depolarization qrs from the end of s wave till the beginning of beginning of t wave that is the st segment that is the segment and that is followed by a t wave so t wave signifies ventricular repolarization so again a very basic concept i will introduce here that is what is a segment and what is an interval so there are two main segments a pr segment and an st segment and uh, three intervals pr interval st interval and qt interval so interval means an interval will include the p wave right so the duration of p wave plus the pr segment is the pr interval similarly uh, duration of st segment plus p wave is the st interval and the duration from beginning of q wave till the end of t wave that is the qt interval so p q r s and t this is something that you will see on every ecg almost on every ecg and other than that we also have a u wave a u wave so we will study more about u wave when we reach that part in today's presentation 